Hi, welcome back to the channel on the college process. Once again, my name is Ed from Principia Prep, and today we're going to be going over how colleges tell if you are telling the truth on financial aid forms. But before we begin, if you are new to the channel and are looking for additional college content, please hit the subscription button down below. It will notify you when new videos do come out. As well as if you do enjoy today's video, please give us a like. It does help the channel. In addition, if you do have any comments or any questions, please leave them down below. We do answer all your questions that you do leave down in the comment section. As well as, once again, for the families of the 21-22 senior year class, we do have, once again, the James Russo Memorial Scholarship that we are using the YouTube videos to fund. So the more views we have, the more comments, the more likes, and so on and so forth, the more money we're giving out in scholarship funds. In the description down below is the video link. You can just watch that, and it'll give you all the information you need to apply for the James Russo Memorial Scholarship. That being said, let's jump right into today's video, how colleges tell if you are telling the truth on financial aid forms. Now, right off the bat, a lot of people have been asking me when I mentioned in my different videos here, uh, about the honor system, or I guess what I consider the honor system when you're filling out financial aid forms. And what I mean by honor system is how truthful you are essentially on the financial aid forms about your assets. Now before we jump into how colleges specifically know if you guys are being honest on your forms or not, let's talk about first the honor system, what I've been talking about for you guys in a lot of these videos here about what I consider the honor system of basically that way how you should be putting your assets on these forms. Now I'm going to use two examples here because a lot of parents have been asking me in the videos and through emails and also phone calls. What do I mean by the honor system? Let me explain to you this. On the financial aid forms, there's almost no way for them to tell exactly how much you have in all your different assets as far as checking, savings, investments inside retirement, investments outside retirement, the value of rental properties, so on and so forth. You have, there's so many different assets out there. It's very difficult for the financial aid office to know exactly how much you have in valuations of everything that you should be putting on the financial aid form. So when I mention the honor system, I'm basically meaning how honest do you want to be about the assets you have in hand. Now, obviously, when it comes to placing assets on the financial aid forms, there is a little bit of wiggle room, essentially, of what you can and cannot do. So let me give you guys two examples examples of what I mean when I say the honor system. First example we're going to use, let's say you're filling out the FAFSA form. You know the FAFSA form it has three specific financial questions for the parents as well as three specific financial questions of the student. Most of you guys, especially for the parents, will fall into the first two of the three categories. Number one question will be how much you have in checking and savings or cash equivalents as of the day you're filling out the form. Number two, how much do you have in investments outside of retirement and also not counting your primary home. And then question number three, which pretty much none of you will be answering, is how much is your business worth? And by the way, you're only counting the business valuation if you have over 100 employees. So if you have less than 100 employees, you don't count the business valuation whatsoever. So let's start off with the first part here. Let's say you have $10,000 in your checking account right now as the day you're filling out the FAFSA form. But you know in the back of your mind that tomorrow the mortgage is coming out or you have the braces or you have the car note or you have some expense that you just wrote a check for. So what I would do is whatever you know is going to be coming out of that account, I would then reduce that and then put that amount on the FAFSA. Let's say in the next five days or so that 7000 is coming out for different expenses then what you should put on the fast form is that you have $3,000 in your checking account. Yes, you're supposed to put what you have as of that day, but you have some leeway here. Now let's talk about example number two of the honor system. Let's say that investments outside of retirement, let's say you have $50,000 in an investment account or a brokerage account or something to deal with stocks or bonds or even second properties as far as your equity in that second property. And let's just say that you want to go out and buy a car or you have, let's say, credit card debt. Let's say the credit card debt equals $50,000 or let's say the car that you want to go buy costs $50,000 as well. And some people think, well, I have you know 50,000 in expenses or I have 50,000 in a potential car I'm gonna buy or I have $200,000 in mortgage. So obviously that 50,000 doesn't count. This is not the way the honor system works, by the way. Okay. If you have $50,000 in an investment account, or even in your checking account, or a CD, or money market, or anywhere, and you aren't using that money up, you cannot in your own mind think, okay, I have a debt that I can subtract this from, so I don't count it. It's not the way this works. If you have a small amount of money, and you're utilizing it to pay off a debt, then that's fine. Unless you're going to use that 50,000 and send it off to the mortgage, and then pay off the mortgage by 50,000, or your credit card debt, or the car in total, you cannot exclude this amount of money. This is just way too high. The reality is when it comes to the financial aid forms, let me go into how they check everything. It's undone by a process called verification. Here are some list of items that they verify. They'll verify in some cases your student's high school diploma to make sure they graduated. In some cases, they'll also verify your social security number as well as your birth certificate and some other things as far as citizenship verification. And then the big verifications, the ones that happen to a lot of people, are the are the ones at the bottom down here are the household verification, the sibling verification, and the asset verification. 
Now let me explain how a college actually determines if you're being honest or not on your financial aid forms. The reality is no college is going to ask you for your bank accounts, your brokerage statements, or anything to do financially statement-wise to look at what you have as of that day unless you made egregious mistakes on your form. The way it typically works is this. When you guys do all your financial aid forms, you're left to basically your own devices is the best way to call it. I call it the honor system, but it's really your own you're left to your best devices. And let me give you an example. The way they check everything on your on your financial aid forms to see if you're being honest about checking, savings, investments, etc., are your tax returns. These guys right here. On the tax returns right here, a financial aid officer can catch, basically see a lot of stuff. Right off the bat, as soon as you go down below line one, you'll see lines 2B and 3B will be asking for or showing them interest in dividends, which means if you indicate on the financial aid forms you have no assets, no cash, no savings, no investments whatsoever, but on here, on your taxes, they show that you guys have, let's say, $2,000 of interest or $6,000 of dividends. They're automatically, based on these kind of numbers, going to go back to you and double check with you and basically say, are you sure you guys were correct in the numbers you put here? There seems to be an issue here from what you put on the financial aid forms compared to what you put on the tax form. So we want to make sure that there's no issue here. If you don't resolve it, typically they'll go through another step of process of verification where they will ask you for an asset verification form. The asset verification form is going to go a lot more in depth. It's going to ask you step-by-step -step questions to basically answer all these questions from do you have checking, do you have savings, do you have investments, stocks, bonds, mutual funds. It's going to go all the way down and it wants you to basically verify in your own handwriting by putting zero there or the actual amount that was there when you fill out the FAFSA form and then you must sign the bottom of that verification sheet and so must your student. Using the same example pretty much, this is what I mean by the honor system, so it all depends on your discretion essentially. You can have a million dollars in Facebook stock or Tesla or any stock that does not pay a dividend. Now let's say you do have that million dollars and you don't want to put it on the FAFSA form even though technically it is illegal and so I'm not saying you should do this. They have no way of knowing you have a million dollars in stock unless it shows up on the taxes. So if you keep it and never sell it, then obviously they're never going to know. But of course, I would not do this because once again, there are these issues that pop up if you elect to go too far with the honor system, if you know what I mean. That being said, I leave this all to your devices. As you know, those who attended my presentations, as well as those who watch my videos, I give you guys the entire gambit of how the game of admissions and financial aid works. I give you all the rules and regulations, and I let you guys play the game as if you feel fit to play the game. When I say the honor system, I, I basically say what you feel comfortable doing. Now, if you are new to the process and you need help with the financial aid or admissions process, we do help out, essentially I do help out, with the financial aid forms as well as admissions and everything else. So if you do need help, once again, on our screen is our contact information. You can always reach out, send us an email, or that's also my cell phone number on the screen. The easiest way to reach me is by text message. That being, that being said, once again, if you did enjoy today's video, please leave us a like as well as a comment. It does help the channel, as well as thank you once again for popping in. 